You know what? It's been a wild year for YG Entertainment in 2019, and we are barely done with 2020. But let's take a look at the complete timeline of YG Entertainment, from the very beginning and how they became the most influential K-pop company, creating the best groups of the past decades, the scandals that put the whole company in a bit of a trouble, to today where YG is coming back probably stronger and better than ever, with Blackpink dominating and the brand new boy group Treasure bringing in a fresh look to YG. Both are bringing a whole new era of K-pop and there is more to come with future groups debuting this year. And before we get started, hit that subscribe and the bell so you don't miss out on a new video on my channel. And be sure to like and comment down below, when did you get into YG Artist? Because I think a lot of people got into K-pop because of 21, Big Bang. Let me know your story down below. Real quick before we get started, 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 화장실 어디세요? See? You, your boys learn learning Korean. <laughs> now for me, learning Korean not only helps me for research for my videos, but also gives me a better understanding and helps me enjoy K-pop more. Not only that, but it also helps me for the future because I know like a lot of you guys, you want to go to Korea someday and me too. And maybe you're like me and really want to learn Korean or pick up a second language. That is why I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Rosetta Stone. Now everyone has heard about Rosetta Stone because guess what? They have been the leading language service for over 25 years. And now they made it easier and simpler for anyone wanting to learn a new language. What's really cool is they use speech recognition software, which means that you will start learning to speak the language from your very first lesson. And they made it easier for you to learn anytime, anywhere by using your computer, tablet, or your phone. What I love about Rosetta Stone is that you learn at your own pace. And it's very interactive so there are no boring lessons, making it fun to learn and you'll memorize more. I don't know if you're like me, but visual learning is one of the best ways to learn, and Rosetta Stone has that. You can learn Korean, which is dope, but you can also learn a total of 25 languages right now on Rosetta Stone. What is even better is that right now Rosetta Stone is offering everything they have. Up to 250 hours of immersive lessons per language. Unlimited access to languages you can switch to anytime. Live lectures and much more for life. Yes, that's unlimited access to the app using my discount code to get it for $1.99 and boom, you have Rosetta Stone forever. Now, if you're curious at all, there's more information down in the description for you to get started. And be sure to use my link so you can save on your purchase of Rosetta Stone. I mean, in all honesty, learning a new language is always good, but it opens up a whole new world of opportunity for you. I mean, who knows where a new language can take you. Big thanks to Rosetta Stone for sponsoring, and now back to the video. Let's rewind to 1995. Yes, I know, some of you weren't born yet, and that's scary. That is when Yang Han Suk was a part of Soteji and Boys. You couldn't really have called them a K-pop group at the time because that term really didn't exist. They were more of a hip-hop group that brought the genre to Korea. They were extremely, extremely popular back then, and when they disbanded in 1995, uh, a lot of people were upset. <laughs> But that gave a young Yang Han Suk an opportunity to do his own thing. His own thing was creating his own label, YG Entertainment, in 1996. Now, I think most of you don't know YG Entertainment's first group. I'll, 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 I'll give you some time to guess. No, you're wrong. It's Keep Six. <laughs> you probably haven't heard of Keep Six, but they were a hip hop trio that was the first kind of group to debut out of YG Entertainment the same year they were established. They did kind of okay, but not good enough to keep the company afloat. And that's when Yang Han Sub, YG himself, came out of retirement to help the company a little bit by promoting as a solo artist. But it wasn't until 1997 where YG Entertainment would see a surge of success in a new group. Or should I say, duo. Chinyu Sean was a hip hop duo of Sean and Chinyu, which kind of kind of makes sense. They were pretty much trailblazers and innovators for hip hop in Korea. And with that success, YG Entertainment was able to put the money into debuting another group. This was their first kind of hip hop group, although it was still kind of hip hop centered. That group was One Time. One Time was getting a bunch of fans, and I mean a lot of fans. But the groups that came out of YG Entertainment now, I think a lot of people would say that YG Entertainment is more influenced by American hip hop and rap. And you can still say the same thing today, 25 years later. But like I said, Chin Yu Chan at one time influenced a lot of young people to get into music and especially rap. One of those people was a 13 year old rapper going by his name, Kwon Ji Young. He was known as being the rapper in the group Little Rota. 
That is until he joined YG Entertainment in 2001. Now, why didn't I call him by his stage name? Because he didn't come up with his stage name until later. Kwon Ji Young called himself G Dragon when Big Bang was about to debut. But now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go back. Now, YG Entertainment didn't really have a superstar on their hands until 2003 with the solo artist Seven. Now, Seven was incredibly popular in Korea. Enough so that YG Entertainment set him to be successful in other countries like Japan and even America. Seven was the first YG Entertainment artist to kind of make a push into the American market to see if really there was a place for K-pop or Asian artists. Turns out there wasn't yet. Now, this is when YG Entertainment was about to take off. In 2006, from her survival show, YG Entertainment was ready to debut their first real K-pop group. Big Bang. Big Bang. Sure, Big Bang is iconic now, but at the time when they were rookies, it was a slow start. But they continued to put in the time, continue promoting, continued releasing new songs, and eventually, they had their breakout year. With Big Bang finally having a place in K-pop and Korean music, YG Entertainment went back to creating a new group. This time, it was different. 21 debuted in 2009, and with the help of Big Bang, they were pretty popular at debut. Now, I know a lot of people are critical about YG Entertainment, but what they did with 21 was genius. Cool groups in K-pop were kinda new, with Girls' Generation kinda promoting at the same time. That's why YG Entertainment wanted to create 21, a four-member girl group that wasn't cute, that wasn't innocent, but was tough and charismatic, but they also had their soft side. And that I think is what made 21 so incredible as a group that a lot of people love them still today. I mean, how could you forget? They set a trend that you could see today in new debuting girl groups in 2020. With major home runs in new groups and promoting the older ones, YG Entertainment was making bank. They were making a bunch of money. And so they started construction on the most infamous K-pop company building ever known. YG artists and employees moved into the iconic YG building, which the land alone cost $2.5 million, with the total after construction worth $8.5 million. And just recently, they built a brand new, better, bigger building uh, right next door, which they are planning to move into by the end of the year. While YG Entertainment was known for creating awesome groups, they also had sights on existing artists. One of those artists was the solo singer Psy. Psy signed with YG Entertainment in 2010. He made his name known by being unique. Uh, you know Psy, he, he's very unique. <laughs> Having a hilarious personality and of course being friends with Yang Han Suk, Psy was a great fit for the company, bringing in a whole new personality that uh, no one really had in YG Entertainment. The signing of Psy was a brilliant move that no one really saw yet until 2012. Psy released the song Gangnam Style, and uh, you know the story. It went insanely viral. He got recognized all over the world. Everyone was doing the dance. He got invited on tons of TV shows, and that helped YG Entertainment big time. For that year, Psy was responsible for 50% of the revenue YG Entertainment made that whole year. This song was a major key for YG Entertainment to break more barriers. Then YG Entertainment went ahead and signed Tableau and his group Epic High. Epic High was a hip hop group kind of going back to the roots of YG Entertainment. They already had a following in Korea and had major hits that inspired new generation K-pop artists like BTS's Suga. Coming from Woolim Entertainment, Epic High was looking for a new home and YG Entertainment was there. It came at a good time because it revitalized Epic High's career and especially Tableau's career after the Stanford scandal. Uh, long story short, a lot of Korean netizens thought that Tableau couldn't have gotten the master's degree he got in Stanford because of the timing. Tableau initially brushed it off until it actually became a newsworthy story. It's a weird story, but it happened. Now we're going into the modern age of YG Entertainment in 2012 and 2013 because Yang Han Suk was participating as the judge in K-pop shows like K-pop Star, where YG signed winners and runner-ups Lehigh and Acton Musician. Lehigh was a young girl with a very soulful and belty voice, a really one-of-a-kind artist. And Acton Musician was a sibling pair that was great at acoustic vocals, songwriting, they were the whole package. Then in 2013, YG Entertainment went ahead and started their own survival show. This was Win Who Is Next, and they were ready to find and debut the next boy group after Big Bang. As the show went, it had Team A and Team B go against each other when Team A debuted, and they were called Winner. 
Winner debuted in 2014 and were the definition and probably the first group to be called monster rookies. I mean, they broke insane records in their first year, becoming the group with the fastest music show win in only six days after debuting. In 2015, YG Entertainment branched out to have sub-labels, The Black Label and High Ground. Those labels would debut and find and promote artists like the indie band Hyoko, solo R&B artist Zion T, a former JYP Entertainment trainee, IOI member, and now solo artist Somi. It's awesome to see YG Entertainment fund sub-labels, promote artists that wouldn't necessarily get the attention somewhere else. And most notably, the future of YG Entertainment was given his own label in the Black Label. If you don't know, producer Teddy is YG Entertainment's lead producer that produces a lot of your favorite YG artist songs. Go look up some of the songs he produced. You would be amazed. Later in 2015, YG Entertainment really wanted Team B from Win Who's Next to debut. That's why they created another survival show mix and match. That is where we learned and grew to love YG's new boy group, Icon. Icon was more rebellious, more hip-hop centered. They too were very successful when they debuted. Going into 2016, YG Entertainment made another move like they did with Psy. They signed the first generation K-pop group known as Sechkis. They remain as one of the oldest K-pop groups that are still active today. Also in 2016, the company wanted to debut a new girl group. This was the first after 21, and a lot of people were curious. The hype was higher than I saw for any other group that was debuting in YG, and a lot of people were correct to be excited about who they were, because they were about to crash land in your area. Blackpink in your area. Blackpink was all anyone could ever talk about. Blackpink's appeal was seen from day one. They were more girl crush and they appealed to a wider audience than just Korean listeners. That is why they're one of the most searched K-pop groups, not just girl groups, in the world. Then in 2018, YG Entertainment tried their hands at another survival show. This one was different though. YG took a tour at other K-pop companies to see how their trainees were. He wanted to debut a new group from different companies that would be promoted by YG Entertainment. That sounded like a brilliant idea. YG Entertainment's name holds a lot of weight in Korea. This show was called Mix 9, where a bunch of trainees from different companies showed up to try to debut. It was gonna be one girl group versus one boy group. As we know, that show kinda didn't go as planned with the winnings team debut being canceled. But what's amazing is we got to see a lot of future K-pop stars appear on the show, like Lu Jin from ITZY, Luna's Heejin and Hyunjin, and ATs. Well, I guess it wasn't all bad. In the same year, Sai decided it was time for him to move on from YG Entertainment. He left and set up his own label called P Nation. P Nation is like a haven for K-pop idols that need a second chance. It's true, take a look at some of the artists P Nation signed. They signed Hyuna and Dawn from Cube Entertainment, rapper Jesse, R&B singer Crush, and just this year, singer, songwriter, and R&B singer Hayes. Sai was using his connections to build a pretty amazing brand new label. Like it's still a new label, and look at the artists they have. Then with the appeal that I mentioned about Blackpink being more international group, they made the move into America. This was only YG Entertainment's kind of second move into America, after I mentioned seven years ago. But Blackpink was a different animal. I am joined by the members of one of the hottest groups in music today, K-pop sensations, Blackpink. <laughs> Blackpink was all over America. Late night TV shows and performances, interviews, and of course, Coachella. Blackpink was the surprise of Coachella by non-K-pop fans. They put on a spectacular show and had everybody asking, wait, who are they? This of course was topped off with the In Your Area Tour, Blackpink's world tour, and it went extremely well. It was one of the biggest K-pop tours by Korean act in America, behind BTS. To this point in YG's history, they were known for kind of not promoting their groups or artists as much as they could. And they got criticized for that by fans and everybody else. But um, it would have gotten worse. This is when the Burning Sun scandal started to explode. This would lead to Seungri from Big Bang retiring from the group and entertainment as a whole. He was investigated but not convicted of anything. 
This also led into Yang Han Suk, the founder of YG, being investigated with also no evidence to convict. Yang Han Suk was then brought back for investigations about him gambling overseas, which he pleaded guilty to. I would go over it in more detail, but I feel like that story is definitely uh, well covered. The bad news wouldn't end for YG Entertainment, as B.I. from Icon decided to leave the group and the company after a drug scandal. With only rumors and accusations happening, B.I. wasn't convicted of anything. And yet his potential as YG's lead producer, or even bigger as YG's CEO, was gone. As YG Entertainment was in a downward spiral, this led to the step down of the lead positions. Yang Han Suk's brother, Yang Min Suk, stepped down as CEO of the company. And Yang Han Suk himself also stepped down from his leadership position, leading to the hiring of a new CEO. But the damage was done not only to the reputation of the company in the Korean public's eye, but also to their pockets. YG Entertainment was struggling to pay back investments and stock investments. It did not look good for the company, and the future was very questionable. And with Big Bang members going to the military and not being able to promote together, CL also left YG Entertainment. It seemed like everyone was jumping the ship before it eventually sank. Fast forward to the end of 2019 going into 2020, Big Bang was planning a big group comeback at Coachella, the same place where Blackpink performed, as the active members returned from the military. But that comeback was canceled as Coachella was canceled. Coachella was canceled early in the year because of concerns over the sickness that spread around the world. Then some rumors and articles came out about YG Entertainment planning a new girl group with the name Baby Monsters floating around. They plan to debut in the second half of 2020 and are more of a younger group, so it will be very interesting to see what this group turns out to be later. Growing pretty quiet in 2020 with just rumors and news and cancellations and people leaving the company, there wasn't really much to be excited about for YG Entertainment. That was until Blackpink came back. How You Like That, How you like that was a hit with a full album on its way out soon and collapsed with huge Western artists. The anticipation for Blackpink's comeback was so huge that they broke Guinness World Records for the amount of views in the first 24 hours of a music video on YouTube. And our track to do it again with the new release, Love Sick Girl. I mean, Blackpink are unstoppable, man. Blackpink was the saving grace of YG Entertainment. Everybody knew this, and so did YG. But there was another group to help pull YG Entertainment back into the spotlight. That group was Treasure. Shh. Treasure. Treasure debuted from another YG Survivor show, YG's Treasure Box. After two years in the making, Treasure debuted with Boy in 2020 and are slowly growing in popularity. YG Entertainment definitely got back on their feet and started sprinting with Treasure and Blackpink leading the way. An explosion in sales led to profit rising and stock rising for the company. Sure, YG Entertainment hasn't been seen in the best light by Koreans and international K-pop fans alike because of the controversies and scandals, and maybe with new management and new groups, YG Entertainment can refresh their image. But you can't deny that they have found, developed, and debuted the most iconic artists and groups in K-pop ever. From the very beginning through the past 25 years, you are always excited to see what comes out next from YG Entertainment. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a brand new video. I tried something a little different here because I did another video similar to this about the timeline of Big Hit Entertainment. What do you think was the major moments in YG Entertainment's history that made them who they are? Artists, signings, uh, controversies, and what companies should I cover next? I am planning for SM and JYP, of course. Leave it down in the comments as well. Now I want to give a big shout out to the people on Patreon for making these videos possible. You are what make these videos possible. If you want to help out, head over to Patreon and consider supporting as little as $2 a month, and that's it. Also, click on one of these videos over here to check out a new one. It also helps out this video's performance. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Annyeong!